Mario Sports Mix is a weird game for the Wii. I grew up playing this game back when it was first released, and even though I had a good time with Mario Sports Mix, I can tell that nowadays I see many flaws that the game has, especially with its difficulty in its story mode. That said, I still had fun with this game, especially when it was around friends, so it wasn't all too bad. I wouldn't say it's my favorite Mario spinoff of all time, but I can at least appreciate Nintendo Square Enix for at least making something that's uh, for everyone, I suppose. And yes, I did mention Square Enix, the same people that did Final Fantasy and Dragon Quest. However, I wanted to make a video about Mario Sports Mix, but I wasn't going to do a full review on it since, well, I wouldn't say much on it. So I decided to make an entire ranking video on Mario Sports Mix because, apart from just generally talking about the game, it seems like not many people know much about Mario Sports Mix's stages, or more specifically as it's referred to by the Mario Wikipedia, courts. Which doesn't make sense because it only applies to like one sport, but uh, whatever. To make this work though, I decided to do a kind of small series for this. So we're starting this list off with Dodgeball, one of my personal favorite sports from that game. Now, beyond that point, you might expect the obvious rule sets that I have to include, but this time there aren't any. What you see is literally what you get. So with all that in mind, let's just keep this simple and say that this is just my personal opinion. So with all that said and done, let's get ranking onto the courts in Mario Sports Mix. Number 12, Toad Park. Toad Park. Where do I even begin? Well, for one, despite it being in last place, I don't really hate it as much as I expected to. For what it is, it's just kind of annoying to play in any sport. For dodgeball specifically, it's hindered by the traffic cones that sure will keep you safe, but can also protect the opponents too. The thing is, you can't alter where the traffic cones are easily, so it's only a matter of getting rid of them on your opponent's side, which doesn't matter since they come back after one elimination. Beyond gameplay, there isn't much to talk about here. I guess it's kind of cool to see some Mario Karting going on, and the music is... okay. But overall, this court is often forgettable and boring in my eyes. Not one I'll ever revisit anytime soon, if at all. At number 11, we have Daisy Garden. Without any plurals, I guess. Alright, can I be real with y'all? This court is really, really boring with dodgeball. I'll give it some credit for having at least decent music and nice setting, I suppose. Always appreciate that PD Piranha is there, but the mechanic is really nothing to write home about. It's just him throwing up icky paint like goop that you can avoid easily and... I don't know, it doesn't leave a mark or an impression for me. At least I remember it more than Toad Park, so I guess it gets points for that? Eh, I don't know. Number 10, DK Dock. Firstly, I didn't intend to place all the Flower Cup courts at the bottom three. It just sort of happens, you know? Secondly, this one could have been better. The simple gimmick of the court swaying up and down, sometimes exposing the water below, is really interesting, and I do like it. It's just that it's not really utilized well, since you probably won't see anyone jump back and accidentally fall that often. It isn't as significant, but hey, it's at least interesting. It sucks even more though, because the atmosphere and music is really nice to listen to and admire. Really wish it could have been better, but beggars can't be choosers, I guess? Number 9, Peach's Castle. In a similar vein to DK Dock, this also could have been better. But even though the execution is interesting, it kind of leads into a whole new set of problems. But to get this out of the way, the visuals are nice to look at and the music fits Peach well, for an interpretation of Peach's Castle anyways. The gimmick is also not too bad, as sprinklers will sometimes switch to any side, either giving an advantage, disadvantage, or equal ground since it'll deactivate altogether on occasion. Like I said, its execution is interesting. Unfortunately, it also comes at the cost of the core being fairly unbalanced, especially with no separation, as you could potentially give yourself or your teammates bombarded with the amount of thrust the opponents can provide. It's an okay core, but a little too free for my liking. Number 8, Bowser's Castle. Interesting fact, this used to be my least favorite chord in the entire game when I was little, and even though I don't think that now, there's some reasons that still stick out. 
This version of Bowser's Castle isn't as hectic as the others in this game, and I'm okay with that. The visuals are as what you expect for a Bowser's themed court too, so what's the deal with this placement? To put it simply, lava bubbles. They aren't as obnoxious at first, but you'd be surprised to see how common they are during gameplay, and it gets a little more annoying since they pop out from below and you're more than likely focused on the game rather than what you're stepping on. Also, the music isn't really that good for a Bowser's Castle stage. Overall, I wouldn't say it's bad, but it's far from great either. Number 7, Mario Stadium. I think it's fair to put this court in the middle of the list, but that doesn't save it from criticism. With the other courts, you had the one gimmick that defines their identity, but for this, what you see is what you get. Just a simple game of dodgeball without any quirks. It's harmless and fun, but this court doesn't really feel like a Mario Stadium, other than the icons. If you remove those, then it's a generic court with no bells and whistles. It does its job well for an opening stage, and the music is catchy, but it's not something I'd want to revisit often, unless this is someone else's first time. Again, at least it leaves a good first impression, so I'll give it props for that. Number 6, Starship. Let's be honest, this was the coolest looking court when we first saw it. In the context of story mode, this is where you fight the Final Fantasy characters in one final showdown, and it certainly feels like an epic finale too. Unfortunately, in the same mode, it's just a glorified Mario Stadium with amazing atmosphere and music, alongside the embarrassingly easy difficulty the first time through. Weirdly enough though, the exhibition does have a gimmick where crystals fall from the sky, giving out coins if touched. While that's cool to see, the match essentially becomes a game of collecting all 10 coins and eliminating your opponents in one shot, so it's not as climactic. It's a cool looking core, but it's certainly more disappointing given that it's the last one for the Star Cup. But I find it confusing how this court has an exclusive gimmick that only applies to essentially free play. I'll never understand what was going on in the minds who had developed this game, but whatever. Number 5, Koopa Troopa Beach. Yes, I did put this over Starship. Cry about it. Koopa Troopa Beach is definitely one of the more simple gimmick courts, but that works in its favor. On top of having some great visuals and music, the gimmick of the ocean waves rushing in and having shells and sometimes coins really evens the field. It's honestly perfect for a casual playthrough with friends, and easily earns its spot here. That said, it's still a Mushroom Cup court at its core, but if this outshines Starship, then it really says a lot about that one. Great court regardless, I really do like Koopa Troopa Beach. Number 4, Western Junction. When making this list, I didn't actually expect to like this one as much as I did, but here we are. I mentioned before that deserts and video games weren't really my favorite things ever, and even though this entire court is western themed, a common trope for desert locations, it still manages to be interesting with two different mechanics. Firstly, the two tracks and circles rotate on occasion which, let's be fair, isn't that significant, but it's usually indicated for the main attraction, the train. Sometimes a train will come by and whatever's inside will vary, from coins to bananas. It's always a fun time with this court, and I'm glad I replayed it just to see how good it actually is. The only downside is the music, which is... Fine, it's just typical to expect it for a uh, western themed court I guess, but it's a little forgettable, I'm just gonna say it. Otherwise, pretty good. Number 3, Wario's Factory. We finally hit the top 3, and what better way to start than with the first Star Cup court. It's no shocker that Wario owns a lot of things in his off time, and a factory isn't too far off. But what makes this a bit more unique is the conveyor belts. These are constantly moving, and with the help of these panels, you or the opponent can essentially manipulate the stage and how it plays. Want to avoid getting hit so close? Make them go back. Want to be more direct and attack up close? Force them closer. This simple gimmick alone makes this one of the best courts ever, and combined with the industrial aesthetic and music, is it really a surprise to see a warrior stage this high up? The only reason why this isn't at number 1 is simply because there's two other stages that are more interesting than this, but it doesn't change just how good Wario's Factory truly is. The power of Wario really does do wonders. I'm gonna be honest, deciding which one of these two for number 2 and number 1 is really difficult, 
as I love these two the most, and after some consideration, the runner-up for the top three is... Number two, Ghoulish Galleon. This court hits all the marks that I'm looking for, and it's not because this court happens to have dry bones. This one is essentially Toad Park, but so much better in every way. For starters, the crates are essentially the same as the traffic cones, but since they move, it gives an opportunity to either stand behind one or wait until they're out of your opponent's side. On occasion, or when hit, they'll release a number of dry bones that will stun you, so be careful with that. On top of that, the atmosphere and music, to me, is more memorable than Toad's Park with the spooky ship and mystical, yet mysterious tone of the music. I guess its only drawback could be how easy it can be sometimes, but otherwise, this is a fantastic chord that improves upon a gimmick so much. But it's not number one, so what is? Is it really that surprising to see that Waluigi Pinball is number one on this list? Well, I wasn't sure of its placement beforehand, but after playing it for this video, it honestly deserves this spot. To start off, the aesthetics are completely different from what you might expect with the name Waluigi Pinball, as this is what you probably envisioned more of when you hear the name. But I digress, this is by far one of the better interpretations. It even has this horrifying Waluigi mech that laughs and regurgitates these pinballs. The gameplay itself is so much more chaotic, as is typical for a stage based on Waluigi's likeness. Not only are you on an actual pinball table, which is a common critique I hear for the Mario Kart stage, but the pinballs themselves can sometimes be unpredictable. They start off slow, but will bump across frantically really quickly. And it leaves an interesting situation where you'll either hope that one of the opponents gets stunned, or risk getting hit yourself. There's so much to think and consider, and it makes this court so much better. Add on to the mysterious sounding music of this chord, which might debatably be better than the Mario Kart version to some, and you get what's possibly the best chord in the entire game. One thing is, it only appears in two sports. A shame really, but regardless, Waluigi Pinball stands above all as my favorite dodgeball stage in Mario Sports Mix. Is this a predictable list when it comes down to the final three? Probably. But regardless of my choices, thank you all so much for watching. If you're at least interested to see me talk about Mario Sports Mix again, but with other sports, what should it be? And do you want me to talk about that? Let me know down in the comments below, as well as what your favorite court is for dodgeball. And as always, remember that Stolen Stew cares about you. D did I just say Stew's full name in this video? And whatever, it's not going to haunt my dreams. See you later, guys.